Hey yo everybody, Haku here with my review of Tower of God Chapter 315 or Season 2 Episode 235. And uh, this one was pretty interesting. I think it was, again, pretty... Uh, the Incredibles kind of not the proper word, but it was very, very good. Not perfect, of course, but very, very good. Now, um, I'll go through my thoughts on it. Just, um, yeah, I really thought the art was a step up this week. I mean, again, it has been good. It is usually good. But the reason I feel like bringing it up this way is because there were just some panels that looked a lot more crisp and detailed than usual. Um, there were some with the usual SIU style that he does sometimes, where he makes things unfocused or a little blurry or just not that detailed. But there were a lot of them that looked really, really lo nice, like uh, Mata's introduction, um, the panel where, uh, oh, what is it, where Hockney says Mata. Both of those looked really nice, and the Andrasi fight sequences looked very, very nice as well. Um, but just going through some of the scenes part by part, we have Danwa waking up at the beginning and thanking Yuje for the save, of course. Uh, we find out that the Yian family flame within Yiwa awakened and saved them. Um, and again, that's having the super big power within you that you were born with. Of course, it's a little bit Mary Sue-ish and special snowflake-ish, and typically isn't the best writing, but I mean... I think it's pretty, I think it's perfectly cool. I didn't even bring it up in the live reaction because, I mean, we've kind of known about this. This is just, this has been something that's been developed. So, um, yeah, it's not a huge surprise or anything. Uh, so, of course, confirmation that in the bed was Yiwa. Like I said before, I thought 100% that it was Yiwa, but it didn't look a thing like her. If anything, it looked more like Kaiser. Um, it does look more like her this week. Uh, the art last week was just uh, odd. So, um, we also find out that it protected them for just long enough for Yuge to squeeze in there and actually come in for the save. Uh, then Danwa asks about Rack, what happened to him, and Yuge and Mazano are like, eh, there wasn't anybody else, we didn't see anybody. Um, so of course we know that means Rack is definitely, definitely not dead. He's off training, off traveling on his own, getting stronger, and he's just gonna randomly come in for the save at some point. So, uh... Of course, we can expect Rack to show up for a big reveal at some point. Uh, then they all plan to go to the floor of death, and one thing Yuge says is kind of weird, where he's like, there is somebody matching that description on Bomb's team, and earlier he said he'd been watching them for floors. If your job is to watch them for floors, shouldn't you kind of uh, know who is on the team? Shouldn't you have a very, very good knowledge of that by now? Uh, but either way... Then we cut to Hockney recognizing the voice that we saw at the end of last chapter coming from what is presumed to be a, um, what were they called again? The gatekeepers. And uh, Hockney re recognizes it as Mata, and so Mata enters the story. And I actually really like Mata's design. He looks really cool. He kind of reminds me of uh, Milo from the old Disney Atlantis movie or whatever. Um, so yeah, he reminds me of Milo from that. And then Hockney, I was like, oh, that one panel so cute where he's like, Mata, and he's all excited and stuff. I was like, Hockney is a cute. Then, um, uh, also the giant we find out is actually like a centipede, which is quite odd. And Mata controls it using this blue orb behind the eye. Um, and it looks, later on we see, it looks like the gatekeeper's actual bodies. So these false bodies or something are interesting and... I'm thinking maybe the tales of Enryu um, creating life come from the gatekeepers because it seems like they aren't natural. It seems like there wouldn't naturally be bodies with sockets that can be plugged into or um, these living light bulb type things. So maybe, here, here's just theory corner for a second. Maybe Enryu built these bodies, and then he was able to make living Shinsu orbs, sort of. And the orbs can screw into the body in order to uh, make the body move around. So that's sort of how he created life with Shinsu. Um, and then, of course, somebody like Mata came along and was like, you know what, I can't create life, but how about I make a device that screws into the same hole that the gatekeepers use to control the bodies so that I can control one of the bodies myself. So, uh, yeah, I think... That would be my theory on maybe how this is po all possible, because it doesn't seem like they're naturally occurring creatures. Um, it doesn't feel like a naturally occurring creature would work like that. Uh, so Mata, we find out, helped Hockney escape. 
the uh, first time when he left the floor of death and says, hey, you made a friend and everything. And of course he says, Bomb isn't a real friend and all of that. And Hockney can't have friends because he's a monster. So it's interesting that he calls himself a monster here. Definitely got some backstory going on and seeming like Hockney may actually be more important to the story than I thought he was going to be. Um, I, I mean, I thought he was going to be important enough, like serving as a plot device and uh, getting them through the floor of death and introduced to stuff. But uh, it seems like even further than the floor of death, he might play a bigger part in the story if we're giving him this sort of backstory. Then again, one of the best backstories we ever had was Daniel's, and he isn't a continuing part of the story right now. Uh, the same being true of, uh, well, kind of the same being true of Anak. She has quite possibly the best backstory. She isn't in the story right now. Kaiser also, so I mean, a good backstory doesn't necessarily guarantee you're going to be a big part in the story, I guess. Uh, but I do find it interesting. So Hockney wants to go to a place called South City to find the red light because Emily told him to. And uh, apparently if he goes back there, Mata says this dude named Hell Joe will try to kill him. And then bam, gatekeeper attacks. So uh, once the gatekeeper attacks them, we actually cut on over to another gatekeeper attacking Coon's group. And the two gatekeepers look about, the, at least the false bodies that they're in, look about the same. So uh, again, pretty interesting. The design looks look the same for those bodies. So then Evan and Yuri are like, okay, we're going to leave it to the regulars to see if they can handle themselves down here. So Andrasi just kicks it in the face and uses a new move called the uh, Chiffon Sword, obviously based on Yuri's Red Velvet Sword. Uh, so both interesting. I, I liked it. I mean, it makes sense for that to be Andrasi's new power-up. And her taking down the false body so easily... Uh, while it was like, oh, gatekeepers are scrubs, Andrasi can just kick it in the face, it's, it, it still had some really nice art and it was a cool sequence. But then the true body comes out of the eye, and actually it releases this Shinsu that's able to, um, like, sort of, it looks like it scorches or rips part of um, Andrasi's coat, so she's like, okay, tag out, tag Zen Kun to fight. And then we end off with Kuhn bringing out the Rubik's Cube. It's called Ennacor, apparently. And there's an eye thing on the wall at the very end that talks about getting rid of them all. And says, as the very last line, call Richie Falawan. So now we're getting some name drops and getting hyped up for Heljo and Richie Falawan. We met Mata. We got a lot of different stuff going on. Um, <laughs> I, all, I could re all I could think of when it's like, call Richie Falawan, though, is... Rem remembering all of the times way, way back in, like, Revolution Road and stuff, like, probably a year or so before we actually even met the character of all these different characters saying, go, Sachi Faker the Ticketer, and hyping up Sachi Faker where we're like, oh, is he gonna be this big, crazy bad guy? And then he just shows up and's like, yo, I'm part of the team now. So, um, <laughs> that's all I can think of when, uh, they talk about Richie Fallow, and I was like, yep, the name drops, getting sachi would here. Then, uh, for this one, like I said at the beginning, there was some really nice art that I really appreciated this week. Um, I really liked the panels for the Andrasi beating up the Gatekeeper fight. I thought those were really cool. And I also liked the art of, uh, just Mata and, um, Hockney talking. I thought it was cool. Uh, so it was a cool adventure. We actually didn't have that much that actually happened. It was mostly just setup and introduction, but it was set up an introduction that's really vital for the story right now, so definitely good. Um, and the blog as well, the only thing that's really important from the blog to bring up here is that uh, SIU said that there would be um, a lot of bug-like designs this arc because he thought since it's technically in the body of a dead um, administrator or guardian, whatever. Um, since it's technically in a corpse that he thought uh, bug-like designs would be pretty appropriate for that. So uh, there will be more kind of like the, what was it called, many legs in English. Um, so there will be more creatures sort of like that. They're sort of like insect type monsters. So that'll be interesting. I like insect monster designs. Um, and that's about all I got. And it feels as though I understated how much I enjoyed this chapter going through it like I did, but I really, really liked it. I just, this adventure feel is really, really cool to me, and I love adventure series, so I'm really liking what this arc is doing. It feels different from other arcs we've had in the past, and just, I don't know, I'm so interested. I'm so interested in the setting of the Hell Train, the new characters. I'm interested in Richie Falawan and Hell Joe. 
I'm really excited about South City because I want to know what a city in the Floor of Death looks like. Um, and just Mata being introduced, I thought he was a really cool looking character as well. So I'm pretty happy with what we got this week, like very much so. So much so that I actually want to give it a 9... Um, 9... Little I ooh the uh, sentient light bulbs out of ten nine out of ten, um, and that's what I got. So next week, what am I what am I expecting? Continue the adventure. Maybe check in with uh, Rachel and Caracas team, but I doubt it. I think we probably won't check into them with them until much later. It will be interesting to see since what we were seeing of Danwan uh, Yiwa since what we were seeing of them was like three months ago, it'll be interesting to see if we see more of them building up to them getting to the floor of death or not. Um, so yeah, I doubt we'll see Karaka's team for a while, because I think we're going to focus on Bomb's team for a while, uh, get them through some adventure parts, get them used to the floor of death, and then we have the antagonist come in. We might have some minor antagonists beforehand, like Hell Joe or Richie Falawan. Um, but either way, that's kind of how I think that it might play out in the near future. Interested to see what happens when Bomb wakes up, uh, or how Bomb and Hockney are going to deal with this, uh, dude that's attacking their, uh, Many Legs ride. Uh, and yeah, I guess that's about it. But I feel like Many Legs could probably handle the Gatekeeper. I mean, it is a big, bulky Gatekeeper body on its own, kind of. So yeah, there's just a lot of stuff to learn. This was just a bunch of uh, introduction for us to go off on idea-wise. Um, that's it. I hope you did like the video. Uh, like if you did like it. And uh, subscribe if you want to for more Tower of God and a ton of other things on the channel. Uh, comment down there as well. Tell me what you thought of this chapter, what you thought of my thoughts on it. Share this video if you would like to as well if you want to. Um, Follow on Twitter if you want. I'll try to keep you updated there and stuff for the channel. That's it. So thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.